Hey guys, it's Chris. From the most famous explosions in rocket history to the only people who have ever died literally in outer space, here are 10 rocket launches gone wrong. Number 10, the Vanguard TV-3. The Vanguard TV-3 disaster was one of the earliest rocket launches that ever went wrong in the history of humankind. It happened over 60 years ago, during 1957, while the United States and the Soviet Union were going head to head, trying to be the first ones to master space. There were two organizations in the United States trying to get satellites launched into orbit. One of them was the National Academy of Sciences, who used the three-stage Vanguard rocket developed by the Naval Research Laboratory. Unfortunately, things weren't going that well for the United States in the beginning. On October 4th, the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite into orbit. This was the Sputnik, and a month later they launched Sputnik 2, complete with a passenger dog and everything. Embarrassed, the United States tried to push forward with their Vanguard rocket, and it was a huge disaster. According to NASA, on December 6th, Vanguard TV-3 was only four feet off the ground when the main engine lost thrust, and the rocket fell out of the air, and the entire thing exploded in a giant fireball of embarrassment. The press even referred to the American failure as Kaputnik, and at that point the U.S. was dragging behind the Soviets. The Vanguard test flight was a huge flop. The satellite itself was damaged beyond repair, and today, you can see this famous failure on display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum located in Washington, D.C. Have you ever been to the Air and Space Museum? What'd you think? Let me know in the comments. Number 9. The Apollo 1 Fire On January 27, 1967, a flash fire engulfed the Apollo 1 command module. During a rehearsal launch test, and despite the emergency procedures in place and the assistance of the ground crew, all men inside the module burned up as if someone had trapped them inside of an oven. It was one of the biggest setbacks in the space program near the end of the 60s. It took over 18 months before NASA felt confident to send any additional men into space. The astronauts who lost their lives that day were Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. All of the astronauts had flight experience, and yet they went up in flames likely because of a stray spark that may have come from a damaged wire, at least according to the NASA Review Board. The spark was all it took inside of that pure oxygen environment to create an unstoppable blaze. And to make matters worse, the hatch door proved too tough for the astronauts to open during the situation. While on fire, the astronauts struggled to open the door, but the pressure from inside the spacecraft had it sealed up tight and impossible to pry open. After the tragedy, scientists made some serious changes to the design of the Apollo aircraft, such as removing the oxygen environment and replacing it with a less flammable nitrogen-oxygen environment. And shortly after, in 1969, the Apollo 11 mission finally landed on the moon. Number 8. The Apollo 6 Disaster After the Apollo 1 disaster, there was the Apollo 6 disaster. Luckily, this was an unmanned mission, and actually NASA's last one. It was launched on April 4, 1968. It was the second unmanned test of the Saturn V launch vehicle. The entire point of the test was to demonstrate the capability of the Saturn V rocket with a simulated payload, showing the command module's capability to withstand re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Unfortunately, the launch was plagued with issues from the beginning, when the rocket launched igniter fuel lines inside the J-2 engines ruptured. The guidance system shut down two of the second stage engines, and the third stage engine performed extremely poorly. All of these things prevented the vehicle from achieving parking orbit, basically nothing worked. But Command changed things up and tried to launch the rocket again. They wanted to achieve a high orbit and then a high speed return, but they ended up burning too much fuel. This left the rocket unable to enter the atmosphere fast enough. The spacecraft came down at 33,000 feet per second instead of the proper 37,000 feet per second, which resulted in the craft landing around 43 nautical miles from its original destination. It landed slightly north of Hawaii, and the third unmanned mission was cancelled. But that didn't stop NASA from going ahead with plans for its next series of rockets, and that led to the successful moon landing in 1969. Number 7. Japanese Rocket Failure not all the rocket disasters happened on U.S. soil. As recently as 2018, a rocket launch went terribly wrong in Japan, resulting in a huge ball of fire and a whole lot of shattered dreams. The rocket failure happened on June 30th, 
when a Japanese startup company tried to launch their Momo 2 rocket, only to have it crash back to Earth after just seconds off the launch pad. Nobody was injured in the incident, but the rocket was definitely destroyed. I'm sure people thought it was a meteor falling to Earth or something. That would be crazy to see. The company was called Interstellar Technologies, and they were trying to make lightweight rockets that were low cost and easy to use to send satellites into space. This was their second attempt at an inexpensive rocket. The first attempt with the Momo was a huge failure, with the rocket not even leaving the launch pad. And their second attempt clearly wasn't much better, seeing as the rocket exploded. In the end, it wasn't great news for the company. They were trying to put a satellite into low orbit by 2020, while spending a small fraction of what the government spends to get satellites into Earth. Unfortunately, some things just aren't meant to be done cheaply. Number 6. The 1986 Challenger Explosion the failure of the 1986 Challenger mission shocked the entire world. This was a tragedy of biblical proportions that changed the way NASA operated and that seriously distorted the public's opinion on spaceflight forever. It happened on January 28th when the space shuttle Challenger exploded after only 73 seconds in the air. It happened after the shuttle blasted off from Florida's Kennedy Space Center and the explosion resulted in the immediate deaths of all seven astronauts on board. It also resulted in the death of a civilian named Krista McAuliffe, who had been selected for NASA's Teacher in Space program. And you can probably imagine the program was shut down pretty quickly after this. One of the reasons the Challenger disaster was indeed so disastrous is that it was witnessed by everyone in the world as it happened live, and the image of the space shuttle exploding was horrific to watch. Then afterwards, the reason for the disaster really put a sour taste in everyone's mouth. According to Space.com, experts claim that the Challenger was destroyed all because of a rubber O-ring that failed, letting hot gas escape and damage the external fuel tank. And to take things a step further, the O-ring failed because it was too cold outside on launch day. The experts went on to say that the Challenger should never have been launched in the first place, and that the recent launch fever had motivated the people in charge to launch the rocket, even though it should have stayed grounded. Number 5. The Titan 34D The destruction of the Titan 34D rocket has been referred to as the death of a monster. In April of 1986, the massive Titan 34D rocket blew itself into pieces seconds after launching from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Titan rockets were some of the most volatile ever used, as they were originally designed to be ICBMs and used storable liquid fuel. The fuel was able to sit inside of the missile's tanks for long periods, but if any of the gas escaped, the fumes were potent enough to kill anybody nearby who wasn't wearing an appropriate breathing apparatus. These rockets were the real deal, and the incident in 1986 was the end of the line for these monsters of the space industry. The Titan 34D rocket system had been carrying a highly classified payload into space. What we know today was the KH-9 Hexagon Reconnaissance Satellite a satellite the size of a Greyhound bus. The initial investigation revealed some very strange things, specifically rifle shells in the surrounding area. Some people speculate even today that the explosion of the rocket was sabotaged by someone firing a rifle at it. But of course, a proper investigation later showed that the problem had been internal. Some rubber insulation around the propellant had come loose, and this allowed hot combustion gases to burn into the steel rocket casing causing a rapid and complete destruction of the entire vehicle. Number 4. Cosmos 1 The Cosmos 1 was one of the more fascinating projects ever attempted in space. It was a project put forth by Cosmos Studios and the Planetary Society as a way to test how a solar sail could work in space. A lot of this was almost based on science fiction. The whole point of the solar sail was that it would use photons from the sun as fuel. The spacecraft would literally use a huge sail to harness the energy of the sun and thereby increase its velocity without the need for actual fuel. Unfortunately, the mission was a huge failure. The Cosmos 1 launched on June 21, 2005 from a Russian Delta II submarine. But there was a huge rocket failure which prevented the spacecraft from ever getting into orbit. Instead of showing the capability of the solar sail, it was a great big waste of $4 million. The spacecraft was supposed to hit an altitude of around 500 miles, at which point the sails would have been unfurled and used to boost the craft higher into the Earth's orbit. What happened instead was that something went wrong with the fourth stage firing and the Cosmos 1 appeared to burn up in the atmosphere before even completing an entire orbit around the Earth. And it's a real shame. 
because a solar sail would have been a very cool thing to be able to use in space. It may have been the beginning of a beam propulsion system, a system which could have been fueled from Earth. By pointing artificial microwaves from a radar installation at the solar sails, workers on Earth could have theoretically pushed the aircraft all the way through the solar system without needing any unnecessary fuel. Number 3. The SpaceX Starship SpaceX is infamous for failed launches, and the latest prototype from SpaceX, which they call their next-generation Starship, recently exploded on impact while trying to land. The Starship prototype reached an altitude of around 32,800 feet, and it did this pretty successfully. The problem was when it tried to touch back down. The flight up was great, the landing not so much. Upon impact, the entire Starship prototype exploded in a devastating ball of fire. The principal integration engineer from SpaceX later gave a statement saying that they still need to work on the landing a little bit more. And yeah, I'd say they definitely do. The whole point of the Starship is to carry cargo and humans to both the Moon and Mars, while being able to bring people back to Earth using the same rocket. The rockets need to be reusable, and the company wants them to be just like commercial aircraft. The Starship goes to the Moon, it refuels, it goes back to Earth, and it does the same thing over and over again just like an airplane. Unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be possible just yet. Number 2. Goes G The Goes G was another failed launch from the 80s. On May 3, 1986, NASA tried to launch a weather satellite for the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and it failed miserably. The rocket malfunctioned in midair and burst into a massive cloud of smoke and flame. This happened just a minute after it left Cape Canaveral. But unlike other rocket failures that had something to do with internal components malfunctioning, this one was apparently caused by a lightning strike. According to NASA, lightning hit the Delta rocket and caused a short circuit, which in turn caused the main engine to power down prematurely. This left the rocket tumbling through the sky with some of its boosters firing at random. NASA unfortunately had no choice but to hit the self-destruct button and explode the rocket over the Atlantic Ocean. If you're wondering why they decided to self-destruct the rocket, it was because otherwise it could have done some damage to civilians as it fell back down to Earth. It's always safer to blow the rocket up over the ocean rather than risk it crashing into a populated city. And believe it or not, this was actually the first launch since the Challenger disaster just a few months earlier, and it was a huge blow for NASA's self-esteem. Number 1. The Soyuz 11 the disaster of the Soyuz 11 mission didn't have so much to do with a rocket failing as much as it had to do with a serious lack of oxygen. The Soyuz 11 mission had actually been going very well, after the team had spent 23 days in orbit and occupied the first space station in history, and this was back in 1971. Unfortunately, when the astronauts aboard the Soyuz 11 returned to Earth, they were discovered dead. The cause of their deaths was the subject of great debate for a couple years. After the space shuttle fell back down to Earth on June 30th, and the recovery team opened the hatch to find the corpses of Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsyev. Initial speculation had some people theorizing that the cosmonauts died because of psychological stress during the long flight. After all, this was the first long trip that three men spent in space together. But Chuck Berry, a NASA physician, suggested that a toxic substance could have seeped into the module and killed everyone inside. It wasn't until a couple years later that it was revealed a rupture breathing valve had caused all three men to die of decompression. There had been a huge drop in air pressure, and the air inside their lungs had expanded suddenly, and they basically exploded from the inside. These were the first three deaths to actually happen while in space, and they would have been extremely painful. Would you ever set foot in a rocket ship? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you again soon, and thanks for watching.